cults are definitely not real in terms of, I mean, that's yeah, the ultimate. But one thing is real. It's probably a lot of RH negative people who read them for people. It's probably that RH negative people have the ability to bamboozle. I think that's one thing that we know how to do when we have to and we grew up having to. So whenever you see somebody that is out there and basically pretending to be able to do something that's really unique, chances are this is, you see, I've learned something recently about other people in the public eye who are busy in a type of um, political arena, if you will, an expanded political arena. And you'd be surprised just how many, especially all negatives are there. You'd be surprised. People who I have uh, had on my radar for different reasons, for the longest. And they don't come off like arch negatives at all. They come off very strong and very bullish and bullish. And um, just not what you would think a sensitive RH negative person would come off like. Do you understand what I mean? So, the first thing I always think is no way, this can't be, the, but then I'm like, yes, of course, of course, way, yes, way. You know, like when, when with Donald Trump, for example, of course he's RH negative. And of course it's all an act. And of course he's so good at appealing to the type of people who are likely to appreciate this kind of act. And I'm sure that many of his followers and fans are seeing through it. But, you know, there are different layers to everything. And when you hear Trump talk, uh, he perfected, <coughs> basically, <coughs> well, he looks, first of all, he's a big guy. <coughs> and he's got a New York way about him. And he got a loud voice. And he appeals to a certain type of person by default. And when you have that, I guess when you're in the public eye, you're used to your advantage, you're trained to use to your advantage what you have, who you appeal to. You cannot always choose who you appeal to. Who you appeal to and who your personal friends are is often light years, uh, often <laughs> light miles, <laughs> often universes away from each other, you know? And who you appeal to can have to do with your upbringing, with your whatever it is, you know? But that's how you do it. It's selling points. It's all about selling points in life. And again, I don't blame the arch negative people who put on their acts. I don't, I blame the, really the people who are so easily fooled. I really blame them. I really blame them. I don't blame even politicians for the most part. I don't blame them. I never, you see, I have grown up listening to people who love to blame politicians for everything. But you know what? Guess what? The moment a new guy came and he told them what they want to hear, they full force ahead like idiots, like lemmings, went right back on board and attacked people who went again. And then, of course, four years later, three years later, sometimes one or two, oh God, this guy's the same way. You know, it's people who are always one step behind are the people that, you know, are gonna be easily manipulated. And when you're easily manipulated, then, hey, what you, the problem is the numbers. It's a numbers game. And the problem is that the people who are in the masses are the masses. But they were also the ones who cheered and supported the deportation of Jews in Nazi Germany. So you cannot make something, I think there are predispositions. <clears throat> I really believe that. I really believe some people are just born to follow. Because even when you want to empower them, as I have tried many, many times before, 
they don't want it. They want to be babysat, they want to be guided. So there's absolutely nothing that you can do in terms of comparing yourself to people. And um, whenever I read about the mediums and the psychics and the tarot card readers and the, um, what is it, the thought, you know, Yuri Gala shows up for a bunch of these, he, he also shows up as an expert for things that are actually real phenomena, but just commercialized into psychic cellular phenomena. You see, that's the difference. The unexplained, and the key is to explain the unexplained, but in a way that is theatric and full of trickery. And then people suddenly stop thinking. And I saw a few more pictures, a few more images. Um, see, I don't know which is real or not of a spirit leaving a body. I, I, one that came from a real news camera and it seems like, yeah, I, why wouldn't the aura, why wouldn't your energy leave you the moment you, you know, first of all, this uh, myth of six gram or seven gram or whatever, the weight of the soul, that was BS. That was nonsense, of course. But, now, the soul would be weightless, right? All your energy. But there is something too. I would not be surprised if I saw, I never saw somebody dying, by the way. I never saw it. I never saw that, you know? But if I did, I wouldn't be surprised if the energy leaves the body right in front of me. And the energy sort of lingers there. But you see, energy can only get to you if you are receptive for it, the type of energy. And a person dying probably didn't have, yeah, you know, I wouldn't be worried, I don't think I would be scared or worried about that at all. You know, but it looks for a host. Energy travels, it's everywhere. Your energy is right here. If you're watching this video, your energy is right here next to me, part of it is right here. If you die or somebody in this world, everybody that dies, everything that happens anywhere in the world is partially here. You know what I mean? And it impacts us. And when you're intuitive and allow it to impact you even stronger, it can guide you. That you understand what's happening in the world. You know something is coming. You know no matter how significant or insignificant it may appear to be, you know something is coming, you sense it. And it's not telepathy in the form that you have been explained, but it is reading of energy, because energy is my first, it's our first language. Energy is our first language. And you can You don't need to, I don't, you see, learning to read it, learning to, I hate the learning to, when you say learning to it, that means read a bunch of books and then get a wrong opinion from somebody. Then get somebody's writings that are full of something that needed to be added in order to sell the book, for the publisher to be happy and say, now we can do this. So I don't even want the uh, learning approach. I don't even like it. I think that's the wrongest approach you can possibly have. You need to look at your own patterns and your own past experiences and start reading what is there. Read what is already there. Don't read something that somebody else writes because your mind is lazy. And I tell you another thing, people who are reading a lot of books, I, many of them have very, very lazy minds. They need somebody else's inspiration or imagination. People who have imagination and are creative and full of energy, they like to write books, not read them. That's consumerism. And consumerism is never a good thing. Yes, of course you can read books, but your mind needs to be a shield. Your mind needs to be active. It needs to be through the right energy that you do it. Then you can get something out of it. Then your mind is ready to absorb the good parts and block the garbage. You will probably sit through most of it and think, whatever. 
which is often the right answer and often the only answer to give. But whatever is just about right. Thank you for watching. This is Mike the Man.